Okay. So. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome, everybody, to the Diablo 2 Talk Show. This is episode one. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about my experience getting into Diablo 2 speedrunning, as well as some single player, um, kind of my experience shifting from multiplayer over to single player, right? Uh, because it's been a little bit of a shift, and it's been... Um, it's something that I almost want to promote in a way, not that I want to say, don't play multiplayer. Uh, but for a lot of people that are probably getting into... Uh, Diablo 2, if you're coming back to it, if you're looking at it, obviously the latter is great right now because multiplayer is um, without the issues of all the botting and everything like that, right? So multiplayer is in a much better state at the moment. But for a long time, it wasn't. For a long time, it wasn't. And so um, I kind of came back into it and rolled into speedrun. We'll, we'll get into all that. Uh, so it will start three years ago in 13 days. 14 days, I believe January 21st is the first day I started streaming. Um, so we can go all the way back. Or first day I started streaming Diablo 2. So we can go all the way back then. So I was, I started um, watching, who was it? Siglemic. He was a Super Mario 64 speedrunner. And I watched him and I said, wow, that looks boring. Doing the same exact run over and over and over again um it just i couldn't it was like he'd go get you know 30 minutes in make one mistake reset go back start over again same idea and this was before they had like uh really good setups for like the the wall star i forget the name of it but it's the one where you have to like break off the chip in the wall and so now they just go and like do their little setup and run through it and they get it pretty much every time. Um, before then, they didn't have that. And so it was like a chance. So they'd just go and it'd be like 40 minutes into the run and he'd like run at the wall like nine times, wouldn't get it, and then would quit. Yeah, cannonless. And then would like quit, reset, and start over. So it was like they didn't have any of that back then. And it was like, oh my gosh, how is this anything anybody could do? So then I moved on, I started watching some Legend of Zelda speedrunning, and I watched a little bit of Cosmo and uh, some other runners. And it was same idea, where I was like, this is cool, I love the idea of these old games, I loved the N64 so much, and all these, you know, classics. Um, but they just, it just seemed boring. It just was like nothing's changing right they're doing the same thing they aren't they aren't thinking i guess right they're being very mechanically correct they're being very frame perfect they're going through the motions but it's like reading a script right it's like they have a script in front of them and it goes jump roll jump side hop turn side you know it's just like that is the whole thing very little times it feels like you're having to sit there and make a decision and so it just bored me and so i was like I just can't do it. Like, I was just like, this just, you know, not that I was looking at speedrunning. I was just like, I just don't understand it. But I still watched it. So I guess, you know, who's the weird person anyways? Or the guy playing it or the guy watching them play it. Um, but then I, I hopped over and I saw Nightfall. I, I looked up Diablo 2. For some reason, I was like, speaking of old games, Diablo 2 is an old game. And so I typed it into Twitch. Doot, 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 doot. And, uh... And it was crazy. It was crazy. Nightfall was there, and he was speedrunning it. Um, and I watched him go through it, and he was running a sorceress, and the world record at the time, I think, was 145. Something like that. And the strategies he was using, I think he was even using Fireball, if I'm not going to be mistaken. He might have been using Fireball, like Charge Bolt into Fireball or something. Um... And he was, you know, he ran like a 152 or whatever it was. I was just kind of watching him go through it. And I watched him play and I was like, wow. That doesn't seem optimized at all. I was like, 145, there's no way that that's optimal. Plus, I was thinking about all of the, um, all the, like, mistakes I kind of would watch him make through the run. Because Diablo 2... 
Uh, honestly, you have a lot of slowdowns or mistakes or things like that where you don't really have those in other games because the decisions are preset, so you just know to go do that. Um, whereas in Diablo 2, you have to always kind of like think about, you know, what it, even like what am I selling? What am I not selling, right? So sometimes you make a mistake, you sell something you didn't want to sell, then you buy it back, and right there's a couple seconds, you know. Um, and I just thought like there was, I, I just suddenly it like changed my mind about speedrunning. And it was so crazy to me because I was just so, I was so interested in the game um, and, and how different all of the, uh, you know, the style was from any other speedrun, right? Every speedrun I had seen was just the same sort of, okay, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Diablo 2 was, you start there and you know nothing and then you go and explore um, and it just felt like there's a lot to be optimized. So I said, you know what? I am going to learn how to speedrun Diablo 2. So I went and Nightfall had a little website and uh, there were some, you know, ideas on it, how like you can read some maps and already that blew my mind, right? Like I was sitting there and like the Countess and I was thinking about, oh, you know, how do you, you have to run the Countess and all these things. And then I was thinking about, oh my gosh, actually it's crazy. Because it's super easy to read the Countess. Like, you just go left, right? Every single time that you get in, you go left, and, like, there's always the exit. And sometimes you have the three rights as a left. But, like, it was so... Once you, like, learned how to read maps, I was like, that's crazy. And how many maps in Diablo 2 had that were insane. So just right there, I was like, all right, knowledge infinitely better. And, oh, my gosh, do I have my notebook with all of my notes? Oh, my gosh is it in my backpack no that was three years ago it was just random pieces of paper i don't know where those are i don't know where those are um i had sheets of paper like 10 sheets of paper and i just wrote down all these little things on it right i would just sit there and i'd be like all right today we're going or like you know claw viper temple you go this way halls of the dead you run this way like Everything, that's on my teeth. Mm. Everything and anything, I just sat down and I wrote down, oh, this is where you go, this is where you go. And it was uh, crazy. And then I had like all the symbols for like Act 2, right? The Canyon of the Magi. Like all the symbols laid out so I could just know exactly where they were um, instead of having to run around every single time. So like I just, I, I increased my mind knowledge of the game a ton. In, in a short period of time there, and I wrote it all down. And then I went and practiced it a little bit, just kind of little pieces here and there. And I was like, all right, I'm set to do a speed run. 145 is the record. I think I can beat it. Um, and I went through, and I ran a 428. <laughs> and I think that was my first speed run. I, I might have it on YouTube. I might. I don't know if it's on my YouTube. Um, the first time I might have uploaded it might have been like 3.30 or something. But 4.28. And I was like, maybe this is a little harder than I thought it was going to be. Because it was, it was hard. It was amazing how hard Diablo 2 actually was. Right? It was amazing how hard Diablo 2 actually was. There were so many things that were so different and shifted. Um from what I guess expected it to be, right? So it was like, first thing off the bat, knowing where to get experience and where to level up, huge piece I never even considered. I was like, oh, you just get levels along the way. But it's not quite like that, right? Like there is a lot of stuff that goes into it um, where you're sitting there and you're like, oh, okay, I actually need to like farm in this area or these kinds of monsters, right? Beetles. Who thought you would end up loving beetles? Beetles are like the worst thing in the game. And yet, I will, I like started looking forward to beetles because I was like, beetles, so much good experience, you know. Um, shrine hunting, all sorts of things that I just like never thought existed, I suddenly had to think about. Um, and I started getting better at looking at items and started getting better at, you know, okay, what do I want? What do I need for this? Don't need defense, need these res, yada, yada, yada. Um, but there was just a multitude of things that just were were so difficult. Uh, 
And of course, one of the biggest ones was being the actual difficulty of the game. And this was just a normal speedrun. This wasn't a hell speedrun. This was a normal sorceress. Um, and so, like, going into the Chaos Sanctuary and not immediately getting wrecked by everything in the Chaos Sanctuary. Um, at, you know, going there or archers in the tower, right? You run into the tower at level 6 and an extra strong archer pack is there and they're just like... And then you're dead, right? Like, instantly just dead. And it was like, how do you deal with this? Or any monster group where you'd be sitting there and they would walk up to you and hit you and all of a sudden you're going to fast hit recovery and you're like, huh? and then you can't move. And then you try and move or you try and cast and you an your animation goes off, but they hit you again before and you're in fast hit recovery. So the animation doesn't actually hit. And it's just like this constant progression of things and you're sitting there looking at it and you're like, it looks like it should be easy. It looks like I should just be able to walk away. But I can't because I just keep getting stunned over and over and over. And all of these things, you just, like, I didn't see. And it's so hard to see when you're watching it. And that's why I always say Diablo 2 is a harder game to speedrun than it looks. Um, and a I think a lot of games are, right? I think every game that you think about speedrunning, you suddenly, like, get into it. And you're like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is actually a lot harder than I thought. Uh, you know, I think about that when I like started speedrunning StarCraft. Some of the some of the movements that you would have to do on like the Terran mission two, right? Simple. It's just a quick, easy mission. You go and you kill the infested command center. But like, you have to do so many precise movements and worry about all the pathing of the units and how they're moving around and who's in front and all these things and the mind drops and avoiding it. There's so many things to it that I was like. It looks like you just move some guys over there and attack the command center. But if you want to actually do it quickly and efficiently, you have to be very precise in that. Um, so, so there's just like, I don't know. There's so many things in the game that, that, are, that are ridiculous. Uh, and, and, and I started out and I got and I went 428. And I was like, should I continue trying to do this? Or should I just drop it? You know, like, I don't know. 428 is kind of far off. But I continued. Um, and, I, and I pushed and I got down to like 330, 315, 230, 225. And then it was like, when I was in like the 230, 225 range, it was like so difficult. I was like... Pushing, 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 and I'd like go to like 218, 216, and getting to like sub two was so ridiculously hard. I really, I want to look at my times. Let's go look at my submissions. Um, let's go look at my submissions here for Mr. Llama SC. I want to see how long it took for me to run sub two. And remember, this was older strategies, and there weren't as many guides, and there weren't all of these things out there. So, um, my runs. Let's see what we got. So, it was a little different. The site's under a lot of pressure right now. Check back later. What? Well, don't, don't feel so pressured, site. Full game runs. Let's try that. Let's see, what we, see what we can get. And percent sorceress. Here we go. Where do I see like all of my runs? All right. Um, but yeah, so it was like show obsolete runs. There we go. Any percent sorceress. One, so that was two years ago that I have a 150 posted. And I think that's the first one. And that was, so I mean, it took me about two months of speed running to get sub 
to get sub three hours or sub two hours, right? And then from there, it was like the slow and steady progression at working it down. Um, less than two to run sub two. Yeah, a little less than two. Um, but I was going like every single day running just the sorceress. So much running of that character. Uh, absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Very, very different. Um, but a lot of fun. And... And then I started, right, and then Teo kind of came along, and he started pushing everything down. And me and him kind of worked back and forth pushing characters down. Now, often he would break the record, and then I would, like, just follow him. So he'd go, like, 139, and I'd go 141. And then he'd go 135, and I'd go 137. And he'd go 131, and I'd go 133. Like, I was always, like, slightly behind Teo, working it all the way down. Um... And sometimes I'd like get ahead of him and then he would just like immediately like get past. Absolutely ridiculous. Silly tail. Um, but it was so fun. And we did that with like every character, right? Kind of starting from a point where it was like, what do you do? Like the barbarian, right? I think it was like three and a half hours um, that the barbarian existed. And uh, maybe I'll change this to kind of history. Let's go here. Let's change this to history of. Or his story of DG Speedrunning, right? And so then we started working other characters, right? We started doing the, all the normal characters and uh, working them down. And right in the Barbarian, like I said, we started out and it was like, what do you do on a Barbarian? And it was awful. And it was like four hours or three and a half hours. And we were like kind of working that down. And then finally we started thinking about. You know, Tal 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 in a weapon, Malice in a weapon, because I think we were using Malice and Steel before, and then we switched up and added the Tal 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 for poison damage and started bringing that down, right? Um, and thinking about just every character and the changes that they went through, uh, the Druid, and get like when, how much Molten Boulder are we getting first when we go into Fissure, um, and or keep adding back to Firestorm. Using things like killing Bale with Firestorm instead of Fissure, because Firestorm's more efficient on him. And even now, killing Diablo with Firestorm is better if you can get to a good point to do so. Um, things like the Assassin. How much Burst of Speed are we doing? How much... I mean, there were just so many different runs. And for the longest time, the Assassin was actually the fastest run uh, of Diablo 2. Which is crazy, because it's still... 125.43 two years ago and now the sorceress is over th it's 13 and a half minutes faster than the assassin which is crazy 13 and a half minutes faster the sorceress is but the assassin for so long was like 10 minutes faster than the sorceress like tail ran a 125 and then i think the druid at 132 and then the sorceress was like 137. And then we got the sorceress like 135, 133. And then we like finally beat the druid. But it was like, oh, will it ever be able to beat the assassin? And I remember we got to like, we finally beat the assassin. And it was, um, it was super cool. It was super cool to like, finally, okay, we know the sorceress should be faster. She has teleport. Why isn't she faster? <sighs> Fresh meat. There, it's like, Mwah. but D2 we just, is good game. we just couldn't quite figure out. Um, what exactly it was that we needed to do with, uh, yeah, there is here. It, here it is. And, um, you know, and then we started figuring out the biggest thing was the early game. And that's the biggest reason that it is where it is now today as well. Because late game we started, okay, you can run Diablo in 345 or, you know, Act 4 can be like 3.45 to 4.15 or whatever, right? And Act 5, 6 minutes or 7 minutes if it's not great. Act 3, 10, 11, you know, we had like set times for these. But the big things were the early stages, Act 1, Act 2, really Act 2, getting out in Act 2. Because before we used to leave Act 2 at like 1.04, 1.05. And that slowly started getting pushed back and back as we started getting better in Act 1 and Act 2. Um, a lot of Act 1 experience, kind of, and where you were leveling and getting out of the, to the tower. 
And then you started seeing people leaving Duriel at like 57 minutes, 56 minutes, 54 minutes, 53 minutes now. And so now it's been really pushed. Uh, and Slimo has been a huge person for pushing down that Sorceress because he has run exclusive Diablo 2 Sorceress. Um, just now I've seen him kind of starting to do some Amazon and a little bit of other stuff. But he ran Sorceress purely for like so long. And so he took the record and Teo and I both ran 119s. And Slimo had a 117. And then he had a 115. And he might have had a 114 high, I think. And now he has a 112 14. Hey, BT. Which is insane. Like, absolutely insane. Teo and I, when, when we had 121s and like 123s, we were theorizing about the fastest possible run we could ever see in Diablo 2. And I think we put like 115 or 114 as like what we thought could possibly be run. And 112 is like the fastest if like everything went right or something like that. We were like, oh, 112 would be like literally the stupidest perfect run in the world. And a 114 or 115 is the fastest we think we could ever run if we did really, really good. Nice of you. And, uh, and it was to see Slimo pull out a 112 on the Sorceress was just mind-blowing. And it's, like, inspirational, you know? Like, he is seven minutes faster than Teo and myself in the normal sorceress. Seven minutes. That's just brutal. I don't think Teo and I are that bad of runners. <laughs> but, wow. I mean, if we go, we can go to the filter here of uh, class sorceress. We can go, let me add this in. Add window capture. All right. Kill that, kill that. Perfect. Get out of the way. Look, look at this. And it's really interesting to see the whole progression. Cause you can definitely see like tears of runners within it, right? You have Slimo, who is just in a league of his own at a 112, and still says there's two minutes and 15 seconds to save, I think, which is amazing, and I believe him, and that's amazing. Um, then you have Teo and myself running right around here. P Funk's kind of found this in between slot. I'm surprised we don't have more people in the 120s, but there's only four people below one hour 30 minutes. Like, it is difficult to run. Then you've got a lot of, this is kind of where the world record sat for a while, in this 132 to 137 range. So I'd say that's a tier, and then this is where the older world record sat, kind of in that 140s range. And then this is kind of your more casual runners, right, who will run the two hours around that stuff, right? So you kind of get that that sort of shift, but it's very interesting. And then you've got BT Neanderthal, who I just like to make fun of sometimes because he's my friend. Um, but, but it's interesting to kind of look at the tiers of it and see how it's kind of shifted around um, over the years, right? But yeah, I'm surprised how, how few people are under 130. I guess not. It's it is a challenge to actually run a sub 130. It is it is actually a challenge to get to get under 130. Uh, and then to think that Slimo is like 18 minutes beyond that is just crazy, just crazy. All right, we can swap off of that. So so super cool, super cool. Kind of seeing seeing that progression. Um, and then, so before the 112, but kind of after we kind of started getting all these normal runs set and stuff, there started be to become this little bit of a push right into the hell runs, right? Because initially when Teo and I um, started playing Diablo 2, we, we, uh, we looked at hell runs and it was like, ugh, that's just so long. You know, like it's just... 
it just takes forever, right? You sit there and you're like, how long is a hell like? And and once again, now like times are a little faster, but it was like a hell necro, a hell Amazon, a hell pal. They were all like seven, eight, nine hours long. And it was like, nobody has time for a hell run. That's insane. Like, uh, that's just the silliest thing in the world. And it's so boring or like not boring, but you just, there was so much to optimize through it. We weren't good enough players for it, you know, probably somewhat. And, um, hold on. You say Flufflo's there on the hardcore? Oh, Flufflo has a hardcore 125. Good call for Sorceress. Um, you know, and it called a hell run for a reason. Exactly. And it was super, uh, super interesting to kind of watch. Um, as the longer that we started streaming, the less a long stream actually started to matter, right? Like when I first sat down and I was like, I'm going to stream and it was three hours. I was like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go to sleep. You know, like I was like so wiped after three hours and I couldn't even imagine. And I think my first like marathon stream I did was like eight, nine hours. And I was like, whoo. Crazy. Thank you guys so much for being here for the whole eight hours. You know, I couldn't even like it was like such a huge deal. I like set off a whole Saturday. I was like, I'm gonna do an eight hour stream. I planned it like a month in advance. Um, it was stupid. And 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 to think that that was a thing, you know, whatever, so long ago. It's just so crazy because eventually we, just, we started doing like, all right, now a five hour stream, now a six, hour, you know, and now it's like an eight hour stream is like, that's just a normal day if I want, right? Like I can any day fire up a stream, go for eight hours and be like, okay, that was fun, you know, and then be done. Um, but the hell runs were, were insane. The hell runs were insane because they just, there's so much more in it, right? Like. We, we had barely, we didn't even think we had optimized the normal runs. And now we're doing hell runs. And it's like, think about the Amazon. We still don't even have a good path for the Amazon. Ryu runs fire arrow starting out into explosive arrow. Then he switches into lightning earlier than I do into his lightning fury. Then he switches over to cold arrow, I think, for act three or explosive arrow again. And then back into lightning fury. Teo and I start out with poison jabs, switch into explosive arrow, go into lightning See fury, in and then keep it the whole way through. Yo, Xenocide, what up? Thank you for that host, my my, my man. I was gonna call you a Fran, my friend man. Let's call you a man. Thank you so much. Um, and and so seeing that, like, we still don't have all of the you know all of those things fully optimized and watching even the sorceress sorceress is a great uh showcase you know 530s 520s those were like great times back then then it started to get a little bit lower be, be below that yeah thanks you know appreciate it man we started to get a little bit below that um and then it was like breaking five hours was a huge deal and that's like slowly been pushed down and there's still a lot to be done in that i think that's an area that like those hell runs have a lot more to be explored. Um, so we're going to kind of like figure that out over time. Uh, and I think we'll continue to push these hell records. Um, I'll talk about the shift to hardcore in a bit. But we started playing all those and getting them somewhat of times. And they were fun, but we didn't like fully optimize them a ton. Once again, Slimo came in and blew the Sorceress away and got sub four hours, which is crazy. Just like mind absolutely blown on that. Uh, but you look over at someone like um, Ryu who entered the scene, right? So around this time that we're doing these hell runs, Ryu Ketsukadal entered, entered the scene. And he said, you know what? There is a market for hardcore running because all of us we're playing softcore running, right? We were sitting there and we're like, if I'm gonna run for six hours, I can barely do a six hour stream. If I'm gonna run for six hours and I'm not gonna get four hours in, die, and then be like, well, that's it. So we didn't do hardcore. Like we just did softcore and we and we would die tons of times. I mean, I think I have like a 510 posted and I probably died 
30 times in the run. Like, that was just a thing. You would just go around, you would run around, and you would die. Hey, there's Tao. And, like, we died all the time. And so it's like, hardcore is stupid. It's impossible. Nobody runs it. And then Ryu entered, and he started running it. He would die a ton. Just kept dying, kept dying, kept dying. Um, and then, all of a sudden, he started, like, finishing some runs. And it was like... It like, kind of like set something off, I think, in mine and Teo's brain and some of the other runners. It was like, hmm, okay, so it is kind of possible. I mean, we knew it was possible, but it was like, there's just, you have to play a little differently, right? You have to start saving rejuvenation potions and really focusing on those. And, uh, and I still didn't do that. I still didn't do that for a long time. And so we'd go, and he just kept doing that and really drew a lot of attention to the hardcore scene. And that started pulling other people over to it. And, and a little bit of the, like, normal runs. But I think that even the normal runs started to fall out of, like, contention. Nobody cared. It was all about playing Diablo 2 hell hardcore speedrunning. Because it was so exciting. Right? It was so just like... I mean, look at my run yesterday. Or our race yesterday, I should say. Right? Teo's in the lead. Teo dies. Me, Fluffly, Flufflo, and Ryu are all together. Ryu, or Flufflo dies. Me and Ryu are like neck and neck. I start pulling ahead. I get to act five hell. I die. You know, it's like there's so much excitement in it um, from the racing perspective. And there were so many moments of like almost death. And those matter so much as opposed to if you're just running soft core, it's like, eh, I died. You know, you just press escape, save quit, maybe get your, get your body. And then you start going and you lose 30 seconds a minute, whatever it is. Um, and... And so it was really interesting to kind of see that progression over into that hardcore, um, hell hardcore speedrunning style. And then it started, those started getting more optimized and the people started playing those even better. Uh, and so now we're starting to like push those times down. And it, it made sense. You know, when I started looking at games like Path of Exile, um, all of the streamers, not all of them, Mathel doesn't, and uh, one other streamer doesn't really do it, but a lot of the big streamers play hardcore, and it adds that excitement, right? When I started watching them, I started getting more excited watching the runs, because they were on hardcore, and it was like, oh, they could die. And I was like, why don't we do this in Diablo 2? Like, why? This makes more sense to me. Um, and so we started doing that. And I know for me personally, like my progression through Diablo 2 Hell Hardcore runs, I haven't done a ton of it. I mean, I've done a decent amount of, of hardcore running for Hell. Um, but my progression of it has started to be learning how to bring rejuvenation potions into it and then the importance of those. Because I kept, I would go through, die and act one Hell, two Hell, three Hell, Five nightmare, three, whatever, you know, like I, I kept dying in these places um, to just Diablo 2, right? You get some dolls, you get you get cursed, you get a, a giant group around you when they teleport. There's so many things that kill you in this game. Uh, it's ridiculous. So I started learning, oh, I want to start saving rejuvenation potions. Because in softcore, you just don't care that much. Right, you get a rejuvenation potion early on. You're fighting in Dario. You'll use four of them because you're out of mana potions and you want the mana. Now it's like, maybe I'll run back and get some mana potions. Yeah, it'll take me 20 more seconds, but I'm gonna have four more rejuvenation potions. And as you saw in that run yesterday, right? If you watched my Paladin run from yesterday, you could see the value of rejuvenation potions to where I went and farmed rejuvenation potions for like three or four minutes getting experience of course but farming rejuvenation potions so I could have a few of those to go into the Chaos Sanctuary and when I got to Shank and where I died I was out of rejuvenation potions and I couldn't there was no rejuve button to spam and I, I realized it right I've known it before but I realized it extra how awful it was to not have a instant heal button <laughs> even just a small rejuve not even a fool just one that'll give me a little bump <sighs> to counteract Fresh the meat. bump down Mwah. for you Archangelo right and that was really interesting um, to note and I've seen it I've seen it happen in the past few runs I've done 
where I where I failed um, <laughs> extra where I failed to have the rejuvenation potions carry me through right I started saving them and then I realized as I get to act two hell act three hell things like that I would have less and less and then I would run out and then when you run out of them all of a sudden it's like you can't be in those risky situations anymore and it really changes how you have to play almost so you can't push your time as much because you don't have the rejuve potions as much there's it's just it just really changes up the situation so really interesting to see um the progression there of when uh, when we shifted kind of from that normal speed running to the hell softcore speed running to the hell hardcore speed running and and I'm interested to watch the future and I kind of want to I mean I kind of want to discuss the future of speed running uh, you think hardcore is putting in even more RNG of not dying yeah so and that's the other thing about it is it's harder to run a really good time hardcore because so many good runs get dropped to a, a bad death you know you could be on world record pace multiple times Teo and I have been on world record pace and then rip and that's it and you lose it um, and so there isn't any game today we're doing talk show and maybe some game after uh, so, so the future of it, I think, I mean, I think we're going to continue to see the hell hardcore. <laughs> yeah, you are. I think we're going to continue to see the hell hardcore running, um, going, right? I think that's going to be a, a push that we continue to see all of those characters, but I think there'll be a shift back to normal speed running. Honestly, I don't even know if it'll be hardcore. I think there's going to be a, a shift back um, to the normal speedruns uh, just to push those times even further. Because I think we've started playing really well, right? Like now you're starting to see like our skills are getting better and better. I mean, obviously they've been getting better over time, but like new thoughts, new ideas, we're getting better. We're getting better at not dying, at living in these tough situations. Hell Hardcore Running has like made us better players because we can deal with so many more situations we you know when you play at that sort of level or style you have to get better at that and i think there's gonna be a shift back to normal and a shift back to or maybe even softcore hell running because we're so much better at not dying i think that'll help help us in not dying right like in normal normal softcore or hell softcore speed runs which will save us time in the long run so you take take those world record run pace runs that we've been on, all of a sudden you 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 know now we have one death in it, two deaths, and we'll still run a world record with it because we're so much faster now. So I think there's a lot of room to be made, a lot of uh, progress to be made in those sorts of areas. So I'm really curious, I'm really interested to see um, the future kind of of, of speedrunning. And, and kind of the shift around as we start fighting for the different records because there's still a lot of a lot of area for different records to be gone after and it's kind of it's kind of funny to watch people follow each other around especially Teo loves to whatever I'm running he likes to go run it just so he can get it before me um, thanks Teo but <laughs> You know, but it's fun to like watch, watch kind of uh, as we all, all the runners kind of shift around into different areas and, uh, and, and get different records and, and things like that. So I think there's still a lot of time to be saved. We've got 28 different runs, technically, right? Seven classes um, of four different styles normal softcore, normal hardcore, hell softcore, hell hardcore. Um. <laughs> so, so I'm I'll be interested to watch and 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 see that and and something that I didn't really touch on before, but I want to touch on, is how many different the the style 
of the speedrun has uh, has shifted a little bit and there's a lot to be explored in this regard um, because of Slimo. So hats off to Slimo. Uh, Slimo has started to really show the focus of experience in all of the runs, right? It's no longer about, I need to be out of the tower. I mean, you kind of want to have like out of the tower. That's a bad example. But like, and Daryl needs to be killed by 32 minutes or 31 minutes, or I need to have this done by this time. There's less focus on exact times of those and a lot more focus on if I can get my levels by this at this point, right? So if you're out of the tower at 21 minutes, but you're only level 10, who cares, right? You need to be 11 and a half, 12, or whatever. It is. You know, like there's there's a lot more focus kind of on getting those, getting that experience, getting the right bosses, the right places, getting the experience shrines. Look at the hell hardcore run. Slimo's farming ex for shrines before his countess, right? He'll go find, and he loves having a cold plain shrine before his bail runs. If he's going to act too far oasis, sometimes you'll see him reset runs to go back and look at shrines. Just because if you can get one experience shrine going into the far oasis and you get beetles or something, champion beetle pack, huge. And I can't remember if the current record, I'm not sure if his 112 has it, but I think his 115 has it. Uh, this was like my biggest like, oh my god. Um, he goes into the far oasis, or maybe the dry hills, gets an experience shrine, then goes into the far oasis, gets a boss beetle pack a like other boss pack goes into the the maggot lair and finds a champion beetle pack and then like one more boss pack before his experience shrine expires so he got four packs including one champion beetle pack and one like boss beetle pack like beetle burst or something and he gained like two levels or like a level and three quarters off of it some like absurd amount of experience came from it and he shot from level like 14 and three quarters to like 16 and a half and it was just in like a minute and a half, right? And and so he just got so much experience so quickly. And it was like, if he, if you take that out, that's, I mean, that's a huge, like that's so much, so many, so much more time, right? The time, it would normally take us like eight, nine minutes to get through the, all of that experience. And he got that in like a minute and a half. And when you're talking about a run, that's only a minute 12 or a minute 20, whatever, you, you know, wherever it was at the time. That's that's the difference, right? That right there is a huge difference. So focusing on experience, um, and if you can get it earlier, I don't know. There's still so much to be explored there, and and I want to. Sorry, an hour twenty, not a minute twenty. Uh, and there's so much to be explored there, and I still want to go through and watch uh, and think about, you know. For instance, let's take the Paladin run I did yesterday. Okay. Would it be better? I left Hell Bale, I think, or Nightmare Bale at level 49, maybe 48 and change. Would it be better for me to go do another run or two there and then leave at level 52? Because now I have so much more damage. Let's say it takes me five minutes, five or six minutes to get from 49, 48 and a half to 52 at Nightmare Bale. Or it like, is that time spread out over all the time it takes me to kill things because I do less damage now through hell as I'm running forward? Right? Like, I do less damage and so it takes me longer to kill things. And I have to spend that time also getting experience there. Is it better to just get the experience earlier on? And then I can kill things faster and get that experience. And then have less overall experience to gain by the end. I don't know. Right? These are the sorts of questions that need to be asked. And, and that we all really like have to look for and are looking for and are spending, um, at least, I know I am at least, I'm spending a lot of time analyzing runs uh, and, and thinking about, is this better? Is it better to get my experience from normal bail or from Nightmare Countess? 
Because that's been a big shift as well. A lot of characters have moved off of normal bail kills. Because normal bail just took forever. It was so slow. You didn't quite have enough kill speed. You didn't gain enough experience from it. And so you'd, you'd be sitting there, ha you know, Slimo started farming, farming experience shrines for it. But eventually it was like, screw it. Just go to Nightmare and go through towers. You can get runes. You can maybe get a lore. Um, and you can start getting, you know, all of these different, uh, you know, all these different sorts of, or just shifts. And maybe I should switch over to talk shows. I don't know if I should be in the Diablo 2 or the talk show category. What do you guys think? I don't, I don't know. Um, but you know, but you, but you're just in all, in all these different areas, D2. I mean, it's Diablo 2 focused. All right. It's Diablo 2 related. All right. We'll leave it here. Um, I know I'm not playing, but it's, it's about Diablo 2. So, so it's, it's very curious to see um, that stuff, right? Is it better to do... No I mean, let's look at the progression of how do we get from Norm to Nightmare. In the past, the Sorceress went and did cows and Norm Bale runs. Then, eventually, we stopped doing cows, and we started just doing um, Farm in Act 3. Because if you, did, if you didn't farm in Act 3, then Act 4 and Act 5, you got no experience. So then you would have to go, kill Bale, go back, do cows, get the cows level up, and then go forward and do Bale again. And it just wasn't... It just wasn't worth it. It was, it was just gross. Um, right? And, and it was like, you lose all the experience in Act 4 in the Chaos Sanctuary. You lose all, any experience in Act 5. You lose your Bale kill in Act 5, your first kill through, right? All that wave, all those waves, you lose all that experience. And I remember we thought about it for a while, and Teo and I didn't quite get off of it, but we were like, this doesn't, it just doesn't feel optimized. So now we're starting to go through uh, and do Act 3, right? And level up there to 23 and a half. So then you can get through, get through, get your 24 in Chaos, get your Ancients, and then go and kill Bale. And now you're 27 or 28 coming out of Bale. And you're in a lot better position, right? Um, and so then you're shifting over from, you know, okay and so then so then we started doing bail runs continuing from there right we'd say okay i'm at 28 i'll just do bail runs to 31 or i'm at 27 i'll do bail runs to 31 um but it was slow it was just so slow and you just we just couldn't kill things and it was like all right we were holding off and then you know okay i'm getting some in blizzard just for now but it just took time experience wasn't great whatever so then we made that shift once again where we just said forget bail runs and now it's at that point where we don't even do normal bail runs we shift over we go right into nightmare countess and now we're running through nightmare countess because we've we've identified um better experience from act three getting you to act five getting you to uh act one nightmare where you still get that experience but now you also get those runes and i think oh yeah i'll have guests in the future um, and I think that's a very important piece um, uh, is the identification of runes and skills and things like that, right? Such as the lore helm. Uh, the only character that ever did bail runs was the sorceress. I don't think so. Let me think on that. I feel like the necro did bail runs. I almost want to go through and watch... I almost want to go through and watch just to get to level 26. Some characters just got to 26. Assassin, you could just get to 26. Druid, you could just get to 26. Um, Amazon. I don't even remember what the Amazon did when we first started. Oh, no. Necro did Countess runs because he needed to farm his white wand. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but the Sorceress was the, main, was the main character that was being run for a lot of it. Maybe Paladin did a little bit. Regardless, um, 
you know, shifting the sorcerers even into into Countess runs. And I think, once again, I want to get back to the point of the lore helm and um, the the plus to skills. I think we're really starting to identify how much that helps out uh, speed up an entire run, right? Such as the paladin now shopping for the blessed hammer scepter, right? That wasn't something that we initially used to do. Blessed Hammer Scepter cost 80 grand. It's like, oh my gosh, how are you going to ever have 80 grand to afford a Blessed Hammer, plus two to Blessed Hammer Scepter? Um, that wasn't, that just wasn't something that you thought about really back then. Or maybe you thought about it, but you didn't intentionally shop it, right? Um, and now, everybody in that Paladin race yesterday had a plus two Blessed Hammer Scepter because your damage goes up so much, right? Even if it's a jump from let's say 150 to 180 or whatever, that's a giant increase in damage. And especially when you're counting every hammer hitting multiple monsters, just the speed over time as you went through that. A lore helm for a plus one skill, a, you know, any sort of plus skills that you can find, I think really are starting to be taken into more consideration, which is why I think there's gonna be more of a shift into leveling a little earlier uh, potentially and then going through after that because there are some places where you just have to uh, kill stuff right when you're in the chaos sanctuary of hell night whatever it is you have to kill things I mean if you're a sorceress you can dodge a lot but a lot of characters you're going in there there's a mass of monsters following you to the boss you have to turn around and kill them if that takes you a minute to kill the mo the mob or 10 seconds to kill the mob or 30 seconds because you've got all these plus skills and you're higher leveled that's a big difference and i think that's where we're going to start seeing more thought um and more energy just uh like yeah i guess thought right more just focus on those parts of the runs um just looking at how can i really maximize my damage by leveling or getting the plus skills pieces earlier. Um, as a necromancer, maybe finding a plus to bone spear wand is going to become a lot more important. Because you have to remember, necros are terrible. They're just, oh, you guys know I hate the necromancer, right? I mean, Blizzard, please remove this character from the game. No, I'm kidding, fix it though. Um, they, they don't do damage. You sit there and you just, I'm just casting my bone spear. I bone prison the world and then I just cast my bone spear over and over and over again. And it's just this terrible character with no damage whatsoever. And maybe the focus of finding plus to bone spear wands needs to go up. Maybe in act three on a hell run, I need to go and shop for a plus two to bone spear wand and then use a socket quest on it if it doesn't have sockets just so I can put my white into that. I don't know, right? Like maybe that's what needs to happen um, for that character. I, I could see that very easily uh, being the next addition. I mean, Teo, okay, Teo says he was doing that already. I wasn't doing that. Um, I wasn't doing that initially. Ryu's done that? Okay, well, maybe I'm just behind on it. I probably am because I hate the Necromancer and I don't run the Necro. Uh, but, like, maybe shopping for a plus three is, is important. I have not, BT. Send me a message on Discord. Um, you know... So, yeah, Necromancer was very much designed to be a team player, not so much a solo guy, because he's just utility all around. Uh, but I also had a thought of maxing Corpse Explosion. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's still... I think there's still, like... There's still a lot of optimization to be done in these characters there's still a lot of thought um because you just have i mean like let's take the necro with corpse explosion let's take that for example right corpse explosion 
when you put another point into corpse explosion, all you do is increase the area. That's it. You just increase the area of effect. Um, or the radius, whatever it is. How much do you put in that? Because every point that you're not putting into uh, Bone Spear or any of the synergies, Bone Wall, Bone Prism, right? Any of the points you're not putting into those, you're getting less damage output for that first kill. But then, Corpus Explosion is amazing, right? Everybody knows Corpus Explosion is great, but it doesn't help with things like the Ancients, with things like Bale, with things like Diablo, with, you know, whenever you get down to those big guys, those guys that you have to kill, even getting that first kill. Let's say I've got a group of 10 monsters standing in front of me. I can't corpse explode anything until I've already killed one monster. So now I have to kill one monster and then I can blow everything up. How big of a radius do I actually need for that? I don't know, right? Teo likes 10 right now. Who decided 10 was the good number? Teo did, right? Like. We don't have a perfect answer for these sorts of things. And this is where, once again, Diablo 2 is so cool compared to other speedrunning games. Not that I'm hating on other speedrunning games. I think other speedrunning games are super cool. But you can time everything out perfectly. You can sit there and say, all right, I, you know, I'm doing this route where I get my bottle here and then I go and I, you know, do this boss and then I go and do this and that takes this time to this time to this time I know exactly my PB splits between all of these add up the times compare them oh this time is better switch to that route that's it Diablo 2 you can't do that Diablo 2 you sit there and you're like all right I think this is better and then you run into the chaos sanctuary and you have like no monsters and you're like oh my god this was an easy chaos sanctuary and then the next time you're on the Chaos Sanctuary and it's packed and you're like, I can't compare these two routes. One Chaos Sanctuary was terrible. The other one was amazing. How do you compare that? You can't. You can't. There's too many variables. You can't sit there and, and say this is going to be better because whatever immunity spawn on the monsters. What, you can't duplicate Diablo 2 to test the routes. Even if you duplicate your maps, you're not duplicating what your shrines are. You're not duplicating what your... Uh, resistances are you're not duplicating or, or the mobs resistances are what monsters spawn where there's so many factors and variables that you can't you just can't make this easy comparison and and it just makes it difficult it honestly just makes it so difficult to sit there and be like this is better 10 corpse explosion is better than six corpse explosion why well, I had a better run with 10 Corpse Explosion. Okay. The next run, you have a better run with 6. You have a worse run with 10. It's one of those, you compare over like 50 runs. Or you just compare and go, this feels better. But it's hard to give math behind it. You know. Right. And as Teo says, for example, you want to compare those, do 100 runs on the CS with 6 Corpse Explosion and 100 with 10 Corpse Explosion and time them and average them out. Yeah, great. Have fun doing that. I'm sure that's going to be a great time. Like, and so this is the kind of beauty of it because you get to watch the meta of this game evolve and shift um, as as people start to adjust these strategies based on what feels right. And then as people just start to, you know, get, you know, you, you just, everybody collectively, I think is the data, right? All of us collectively feel like this is better. And then somebody tries something else and some of us try it. And if it's not good, we go back. If it's better, the people eventually shift over there. So it's an interesting shift. Um, of players and speedrunners, it's swarm, but you have to be careful that everybody doesn't swarm and get caught on one thing, right? That you don't sit there and you say, okay, it's better to run bail runs to level 54 because everybody runs bail runs to level 54 and never go away from it, right? Um, and I think that's an issue. Can't you use simple bots to calculate stuff like that? Which build gives you which time and which is in zones. I don't think any of us are going to bot, though. I think that's the thing. Like, yes, we could use botting, but then we're 
spotters. <laughs> you know, like, it's not in the, like, online sense of it, but I don't think any of us want to be botters and have botting software on our <sighs> computers. Fresh meat. All I know is 13 greater than 12 and that everyone here is a beast. That is true. Those are both true things. So, um, so something that I haven't touched on yet, but I do want to talk about is, uh, is the item or like the decision making in the game, right? Um, and I think this is also why it would be so difficult to program a bot almost even to really test it all. Um, exactly. Like Teo says, the bots would have to be programmed in a fashion that they can be compared to our play styles, which is very impossible to do. Uh, and, and that's definitely a difficulty is there's so much decision making that needs to be made in the game. When I sit there and I pick up an item and I identify the item, I have to, in a tenth of a second, look at the item and decide if that's better to wear than the current thing that I'm wearing right now. And every second that I waste looking at that item is another second of time that's lost. And these are things that you can't put in a Diablo 2 speedrun as a whole and uh, and say, you know, like, I mean, when I, when I look at like a Mario 64 run, it's like, oh, you jumped and missed the coin, you had to jump again. That's a second that can be saved. Diablo 2 runs, how many times is an item going to drop that you need to pick up? How many times is gold going to drop that it's more worth it to go pick up that gold or run back and pick up that item? There's a bone wand on the ground, but it's at the back of the screen. Is it worth it for me to track all the way back, pick it up, and run all the way forward? It could be a white bone wand with no skills on it. All right, it's worth nothing. I've lost five seconds. But I had to take the chance of going back and picking it up, because if it had plus two to bone spear, okay, it's great for my necker. Or if it had plus three to corpse, whatever it is, now it's worth 15,000 gold in Act 3, right? Like... There's all of these things where you have to take chances. You have to make these these sorts of calculations of, is it better to pick up the rare gloves or are my gloves good enough? Do I want to wear these gloves with 20 cold res or having the light res or, and fire reses here better? Do I need more faster hit recovery? Do I want to work towards that next break point? I, these are the questions that are just like insane. Right? These are the questions that you just go, what the heck? Is this is this the right thing to do? I just don't Right, I just don't know what the what the right move to make is. Um Is it worth picking up the materials, might? Exactly, you know? Uh and and I think another thing with that decision making that's come into play lately is gold is like I was talking about with that bone spear. Um when you're getting your gold and and how much gold you're getting and when you start over getting that stuff right i've noticed that in a lot of my runs my hell runs lately i've been over getting gold and so i'm in like act four hell and i've got like six hundred fifty thousand gold and it's too much and i'm still picking up an ornate plate i'm still taking time to pick up this ornate plate i don't need it i have way too much gold so that's another like factor in the game that's another piece of the game that i have to think about optimizing perfectly getting that gold from those items or you know sell and staying at the right balance point and maybe it's better to get a little gold earlier and then i can you know wait a little later like it's there's so many things um that are that are luck plus skill right and and a lot of game knowledge that you need to have beyond what are rune words what are the maps right i think for all of us speedrunners we know the maps like the back of our hands there's still a few things to learn here and there right such as like when you're running the catacombs knowing if you're running into a dead end some of us know a second or two earlier there's still little things like that definitely but we know what maps are. We know what 
rune words are. We know what, you know, a lot of these, what resistance is for a lot of monsters are, all of these things. But a lot of the knowledge comes down to that second level of, do I need gold? How much gold am I going to need from Act 2 Hell to the end of the game, assuming this? How much, you know, what sort of items, what sort of resistances are going to be better in every single area that I'm going to fight? What are all the monster types that can spawn in an area, right? What can spawn in a Great Marsh? What can spawn in the in a throne room? What? How do I know what sorts of monsters I want to look for? All of those things, I think, are really um, important to, to think about. And... Uh, and that's what we're, you know, constantly evolving. And that's why I think we're also constantly getting faster. Because now we're looking at things like that. When, I, you know, you take me a year ago, two years ago, I wasn't looking at gold as a, a time factor, right? It was like, yeah, I need gold because I need gold to buy potions. Now it's like, is it, do I need, do I need the gold? Should I pick it up? Is it worth stopping and picking up that right now? Should I save it or should I sell it now? Is immediate gold better, you know, to... Whatever, right? Is the time it takes for me to go and put this in my stash to get it out later and go sell later worth the extra 4,128 gold? These are the things. So our brains are always rolling, right? Whenever we're off stream, we're always sitting there I'm not playing. We're like, hmm, I wonder if this is faster. Whenever we're playing the game, we're like, oh, is this faster? Is this better? Like, there are so many times that I'm playing through a speed run and I'm just like, I think it's actually better if I do this. Like, all of a sudden, I'll have this, like, epiphany and I'm like, why have I always been running around this way when I can cut through on the shorter route? Like, there's a shorter route that I've not been taking because I've been exploring this map around and around and around and around. And I just realized that this always looks in this position. So if I get this exact setup on a map, it's always like this, and I can actually cut it by, and that saves two seconds. <sighs> Fresh you know, meat. Yo, Kampasi. Mwah. Kisses to you. Thank you so much. And then you find an F Titans, and your brain stops working, and you go die. Um, no. <laughs> no. But but there there was, and I, I the F Titans is actually a good run to bring up. Uh... I had, I found the Eth Titans. I went, I killed a, a guy who had Frost Nova and I had conviction on me. I got double hit by the Frost Nova and then I was dead. Um, and, and a big piece of that, one besides conviction aura being my downfall, uh, was the fact that I was running max block, right? And if it's better to run max block or if it's better to pump vitality because max block isn't gonna be helping when I get hit with some insane elemental damage, right? When that Frost Nova hits me like that, that I don't have, I don't get life from, from all that dexterity. So I had all of these points stuck in there and and that just like completely screwed me over. Like honestly, having so many points in dexterity, I think is the reason I died. I mean, I know it is. If I was not max blocked there, I would have barely survived because I the Frost Nova hit me down to like 30 life and then I got hit by like a random shaman or something to finish me off. Um, and so it's like, okay, you know, that's something to think about. Maybe having points and vitality is better for this Amazon. And that's kind of where we've gone with it now. Though I think Teo, when he found Titans, Teo, did you run max block or did you run just enough at dexterity for um, your Amazon to use Titans and then the rest vitality? I'm assuming the second, I'm assuming the latter. That's my guess. But we can wait for him to answer that. That is automatically max block when you run an... I, how much is it? 125? 112? I mean, it depends what your level is, I guess, right? You didn't use the evasion stuff till 59? Okay. 
So shifting out of evasion and dodge and avoid, right? All those, 109, that's right, that's right, 109. Um, shifting out of those and not using those even. You might think that those are better, but when your character sits there going, yeah, 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 right? Just like dodging the whole time, she's not attacking, you're like, because the one terrible thing about Titans is they have no increased attack speed. So now it's really important that you go get 20 increased attack speed from some gloves. Go shop some gloves from Nightmare Countess or Nightmare Charcy that have 20 IAS. Or Hell Charcy, she might have some, but Nightmare Charcy is probably your best bet. Um, go shop 20 IAS gloves because. And this is why we get the increased attack speed javelins as well. So we, we can get the javelin out in time. Because Amazon just has terrible animations. Super slow. Super slow animations. And so she's sitting there. And and you have you have Titans on with these plus two to jab skills. Plus two to jab and spear skills. Increased enhanced damage. 300%. Whatever. You know. 200%. Sorry. Uh, all this like great stuff. And she goes... To throw it. Right? Like. And if you have dodge and, dodge and avoid and all that stuff. She goes. Huh, and she dodges. And then she doesn't throw it. And then she dodges. And then she sits there. And she's dodging. And she's not getting hit. But she can't move. And you can't attack things. And eventually you start getting hit. And it just puts you into this terrible state. And uh, and those sorts of things. Are things that you would think are obvious. You think dodge would be amazing. You're like, dodge, why wouldn't I want to dodge? Until you realize the animations are so bad if you don't have amazing gear that they put, they, they like kill you. And so now it's like, okay, I want to use Valkyrie, but to get to Valkyrie, I have to get dodge. And so if I want to get this Valkyrie to be strong, I have to suffer with dodge. Screw it, not worth it. And so you just get rid of it. So now we aren't running those. We've gotten rid of those until you get to the Chaos Sanctuary where you have to have it, right? You have to have it to just put a distraction up. Here you go. Go fight that, you know. And then Ancients, it can be helpful and just things like that. So super interesting to see things like that. Or or skills like uh, Frost, a Frost Nova. That's actually a, a good point, Slade. I don't think this is what you were talking about, but I'm going to bring it up. Before, when we played, we used to get Frost Nova on the Sorceress. And it was so you could, if you saw archers or whatever, you could Frost Nova them so you could run around while they like took time to turn to shoot you and walk to you. You could have a chance against them. As we became better players, we realized, oh, we don't need Frost Nova anymore. Frost Nova is for when you have difficulty fighting these guys. But it's a waste of a skill point. I'd rather get the damage. So now we don't use Frost Nova anymore. It just isn't worth it because we're better players. Um, I don't know. So it is It is. Uh, just get a Peace Armor and Problem Solved. Yeah, except for Peace Armor to work, you need a point in Valkyrie. <laughs> so you still have to skill to Valkyrie for Peace Armor to put out your, Val your level 15 Valkyrie. Ridiculous. Um, so it's interesting. So going forward, I think uh, I know from my perspective, I'm going to be starting to push more into um, record speed running again. I've kind of shifted around, right? From a from a personal side, I've kind of shifted all around within the D2. Um, space, and I probably will continue uh, because I love um, Diablo 2, and Diablo 2 is where I've like always had the focus of my stream, and I want to keep going with Diablo 2. But sometimes it's like if I just ran only Holy Grail Source every single day, I would get bored. If I just did normal speedruns all the time, I would get bored. If I just did hell hardcore experience all the time, I would get bored, right? Like, there's so much variety in Diablo 2. You have your hell hardcore speedrunning, your hell softcore speedrunning, your normal speedrunning, and world record attempts on those. Your trolley runs, right? Doing tiny hands 
and things like that. Playing blindfold <sighs> never happening Fresh again. Meat. Beautiful subscribers like Ming Seven Twenty Five. Thank you so much. Um, you you know you never have any of the you know you or you have your holy grail sorts. You can go online. You can play online stuff and do the different viewer runs. Right. Let's get eight people in a in a game doing Iron Man. Let's get eight people in the game and do four on four, defend Dario, kill Dario. Those are always really fun. Um, just all sorts of things. And so, you know, I've noticed, uh, I've, I've played in all of them and I've shifted around between them all. And I do have fun in a lot of them. And I will continue to play different categories of it. Um, but I want to focus a little bit more again on the speed running for sure. At least for the next few months or in a couple months when I get to that point, I want to focus in a little bit on that again. Um, because it's just, uh, I've been, you know, playing around with the hardcore hell, how runs lately and they've been a ton of fun. Uh, but I need to, now I'm starting to get better, right? Now I'm getting to act five hell. Now I'm, you know, I'm getting later in the runs. I'm better using my juvies, things like that. And, and so now I'm, I'm at a point where I feel better about my speedrunning capabilities and I want to kind of push them because it's really hard when you just run one run through and that's it. If you're never resetting, if you're never, you know, trying to get perfect maps, trying to get all those things, um, it's really difficult to, to kind of have that, that perfect run, I guess. And so I want to kind of start pushing for those better runs because like, I, I feel like I'm in a place where I can start um, becoming a better runner. So, you know, maybe running that hell hard or hell softcore sorceress and trying to get that sub four or even a sub 430, right? I'm not even on sub 430 yet. Uh, you know, things like that. Um, yeah. So I think that's where my focus going forward is, is going to be. Um, additionally, in May, assuming that they fix Battle.net still, that they still keep all the bots, that they still keep all of those things, um, I'm, go I'm gonna probably try and jump on the ladder and have a strong ladder. And I've talked about jumping on the ladder uh, a bit here and there, but... I think the big issue has been every time that I've got on, it's been so bot heavy. So like that always turned me off from it. And that was my, and this is the part that I want to talk about single player. That was my push to single player. Single player in this game is amazing. Um, a lot of people don't realize it because they don't play it. They go on Battle.net. They've always played on Battle.net. I started out, I played this game for 17 years. I laddered for, you know, 12 of them. Stop playing for two. And then <sighs> Fresh stay, you know, practicing. Okay. Thank you. Kisses, kisses to you. Two months. Um, you know, and then started doing... Okay. And then started doing single player speedruns. And when I jumped over to single player, I was just like, wow. The game had so much to offer that I never thought about. I had never used a stealth rune word before. I had never used a malice before. I'd never thought about any of these, you know, lore helm, any of these items. I'd never thought about which way to turn on a map. I would, I, you know, because it was always like, ah, I have a perfectly geared sorceress. She can run around the whole DL, you know, Durance level. I knew Durance is left, but she can run around the whole tower in, you know, five seconds. It doesn't matter yeah, which way it is. All of a sudden, all of these things started making more sense and getting a, things like a stealth, right? Um, suddenly it became amazing. I cared about all these breakpoints that were in the earlier section, right? Oh my gosh, I need that 48 breakpoint for the paladin. I never thought about that before. I was always like, yeah, I've got 125. I'm fine, right? Like, right? When you go online, you get rushed through the whole game and then you get really good gear really fast. And then you're just playing in in the, the end game areas with people that are really geared. That's it. Even if you aren't fully stacked yourself, you're sitting there and you're just in the Chaos Sanctuary, following around a group, waiting for a good item to drop. And that's like the fun, right? You go and you stand by, Bet, you, by Diablo and you get your mouse pointer ready and you're like, ooh, I'm gonna get the Shaco when it drops. 
and drops come and they're all trash. Or, you know, the guy with Picket gets the Zod ruin or whatever. Um, but, like, that's it. You follow bots along or you follow people along. And, you know, you, you farm some areas a little bit. But for the most part, you're just, like, with a group. And uh, you rush your friends. You sit in a trade game forever. You know, need cold GCs. And you do this. <sighs> Okay, I guess I'll go kill Mephisto. And you go and you kill Mephisto. Somebody joins your game. Say, hey, you got cold GCs? They don't answer. They go. They run around. They kill your Bale. They kill your Diablo. And then they leave the game. A level 1 joins your game. Go to Diablo 2 by ggitems.net. Leaves the game. Some guy joins. Hey, do you have cold GCs? No, I'm looking for them. Okay. Leaves the game. And then you sit. <laughs> and then you make another one. Or you sit there and you scroll through the trade games. You scroll through all the games over and over. Constantly refreshing. And, uh... <laughs> and you just keep going through. That's it. And you go, and so many items are useless online. You find, you know... Try and think of, like, a perfect example of an uh, item. Razor Switch. Razor Switch is a great item. Holy cow. Let me read you Razor Switch. I'm going to start reading it off the top of my head first. 50 all resistances. Uh, 175 to mana? Is that right? Uh, plus one to all skills. Let's look. Plus one to skills. 50 all res. Magic damage taken reduced by 15. 175 to mana. 80 to life. 30 faster cast rate. Amazing. That's a great item, but it means nothing when everybody has an Oculus or a Death Fathom or a Hodo or, right? Like, all of a sudden it's trash. Okay, no. Everybody has spirit shields and all these items and, oh, Razor Switch is trash now. So many items just immediately go to garbage. 99% of items are garbage now because it's so easy to get good items online. Or it was before, right? So now that they've shifted out and they've removed the spam bots, they've started to remove a lot of the other bots, big items are starting to become important again. Not everybody has a Grief and a Last Wish and an Enigma and a blah, 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 right? Not everybody has all these things. And and you start, you start realizing, okay, there's more value in these smaller items. And that's what single player did on a magnified level for me. It wasn't just... You know, that I could go and, and somebody would give me a razor switch and I'd go, wow, this is good. I would be running through and I'd be like, oh my god, I have gloves that are plus five to cold res. And blood fist would drop and I'd be like, 40 to life, oh my god. You know, like, it became amazing. And I remember the first character I played through on my replay through in single player that I beat the whole game with was a barbarian. Played a Frenzy Barb. I got him to Nightmare Ancients and I couldn't beat them. And I went and farmed up the Angelic set so I could go and be strong enough to beat the Nightmare Ancients. I farmed Mephisto like 400 runs or something until I got the Angelic set. And then I went and beat the Ancients and continued through with the game. And it was so fun slowly upgrading my gear, slowly figuring out what worked, what was so good. Um, just all sorts of things like that. So, I don't know, you know, so those sorts of things are just fun. Those sorts of things are just super cool. Um, and and you just get to see them in, in single player. And maybe now we're starting to see that shift into ladder a little bit, right? As they've started to get rid of uh, some of these bots and stuff. Maybe now we've started to shift into a better game play, right? So everybody has Enigma, everybody has every single GG item, and uh, who cares, you know? When everybody's perfect, whatever, you know? The best example for new people bringing new stuff is Arctic Wolf yesterday with the Crushing Blow War Cry. Ooh, that's true. That is true. So, yesterday, 
um, we were talking about the potential of using Warcry uh, for you with swap casting. So if you guys don't know what swap casting is, it's something that I've talked about or I've I was doing in the race yesterday. Um, let me actually just go. I'm gonna go get the video. Let me go get the video here. I can show you guys really quickly. Basically, you're taking the animation of something and swapping it over. Okay. Taking the animation and swapping it over. I'm going to put this up. And let me, let me actually kill this music. So I'm not poisoning we right, anymore. We got, we got it. Right? So watch this. I'm not actually poisoning now. I'm throwing my poison javelin, but I'm using charge strike. So now watch this. Watch this. I'll actually explain okay. it here. I am going to use charge strike from a distance, and I'm going to prove it by charge striking a guy that's, like, in the middle of this. Watch. Watch, 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 watch. Look at that. That hit that guy, and the charge bolts came out behind him. So now I can use charge strike from a distance anywhere that I want. And I no longer have to be in melee range to start charge striking. Perfect. So that's swap casting. So that doesn't just have use. People know far casting, which is different from swap casting, but people know of that sort of um, move, kind of, right? But I can do that with anything, okay? And there are so many weird use cases for it, such as I can make a barbarian, like, whirlwind over space. <coughs> by swap casting his whirlwind animation on top of his leap attack. I can make a barbarian teleport by using frenzy, right? By swap casting his frenzy animation on top of his teleport from Enigma or whatever it is. But what's amazing is it uses the animation of it also it, it uses the animation and it also uses the animations what's the name of it? Not modifier, but like faster attack speed. So if I have a barbarian and I want to teleport with swap casting using frenzy, it no longer uses his faster cast rate. It now uses his faster attack speed. So if I frenzy 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 frenzy, frenzy and my attack speed is like crazy through the roof and I start teleporting I start teleporting at max speed because my character has just gone crazy with it. And so it it is super interesting. Um, and so one thing that somebody brought up the other day, and I actually want to look and see if I can get like the skate, find the skater dude from yesterday. Yeah. Um, but forget that. But uh, so one one thing somebody brought up yesterday was war cry. So a barbarian's war cry always hits, right? He goes raw, and his war cry always hits. And he was discussed, maybe, just maybe, if you swap cast war cry. Because Warcry always hits on top of some sort of melee hit or something like that, you can always hit with your with whatever melee attack you have by using your Warcry swap cast on top of it. And then you could have like crushing blow or whatever it is. Or you could have your crushing blow, let's say your melee hit, right? Let's say I have the, the reverse of it. I swap cast double swing on top of Warcry. 
and I'm actually using Warcry, but because I'm double swinging with a crushing blow weapon, maybe it'll actually hit. And uh, always crushing blow, well not always crushing blow, still have the crushing blow chance, um, but get crushing blow off with a Warcry instead. Um, and these are things that need to be explored that are still, thank you. Thank you, there's the, that's what I has posted up. So, here is, here is swap casting with the paladin. I'm swap casting my hammer on top of my charge. Well, wow, that's, conviction aura. Get that me. was a terrible, that, but basically I turn into this ice skating paladin that doesn't have to use the terrible charge animation, right? So, well, would that hit? Use your faster catch rate instead of IS and be painfully slow. So, on a barbarian, a lot of times you're stacking your faster cast rate because you're going to be a sing barb. Right. So, you just have to think about, like, all of those scenarios. Um, and who would care? If it's a 100% hit chance, I, I just don't even care. Uh, if it's, or, or, you know, whatever, like whichever one it's using, that's so much better than the 30% chance that a melee normally has. Um, charge animation is bad because one, it can lock you two It can get in that like stutter step, right? Where it goes like really slow. He'll be like, like running in place for a long time. And that's horrible. You just get, you just get hit tons. Um, the, it can run into stuff and then burn all your mana really quick. So if there's like, a, if I'm charging and I hit like a, a little stone, he won't go around the stone. Instead, he'll go and then burn all of his mana really fast because um, he'll try and charge like 20 times. When you swap cast like a hammer animation on top of charge or something, it will remove all of that. When you hit the stone, it'll go around the stone. So we're basically using a bug to avoid another bug. Exactly, Upia. We're using a swap cast glitch or bug to get around the terrible animation that charge has. And that doesn't mean it's always better to, to swap cast into charge because it takes a second to get there. Um, but you want to... You want to do it whenever you need to go long distances, whatever it is, you know, because it's just... It's better than a regular charge a lot of times. Can I talk about the different phases of animation? So you have your like cast or attack animation, whatever, and every character has different animation timings things. So like the Amazon, like I said, there's the whole time where I'm pulling back and going to release the javelin. And if I get hit at any point during that time I'll, that does enough damage, I'll go into faster hit recovery and I won't get my attack off. A lot of times it'll still show the attack going out though, but it won't actually be out there. There's a lot of animation glitches in Diablo 2. For instance, charge bolts. A lot of times, charge bolts are just invisible when you hit a monster, and then you're just running, and then the charge bolts all hit into you and you die, and you're like, oh, great, that was fun. There are a lot of things like that um, that you you kind of get to notice. So so that's a big, important piece. Like I was saying, that's, that's probably the hardest thing in speedrunning. Um, or the hardest thing to see when watching a speedrunner is you don't think about all of the animation timings and all of the hit recovery and all of the, you know, your cast speed and all that stuff. So you don't think about those things when you're watching it. You're just like, why didn't he cast Frost Nova? Um, the reason he didn't cast Frost Nova is because he couldn't, because he was getting hit. He tried to, he got hit in his animation. I have a really good show of that. Let me go on my Twitch clips and see if I can find it. I lost an assassin. I think it was an assassin hardcore speed run. Um, oh, where is it? Basically, I lost it in the River of Flame, where I'm running, and I jump past a guy, and then 
that all their animations are like shooting this way and then all of a sudden all their animations appear behind them and they hit me and I'm like mid teleport and then I don't teleport and I die. And it was, it was awful. It was so awful, but it's like, that's Diablo 2, you know? That's Diablo 2. Okay. Oh, guys. What was the base of stats spending in single player? Enough strength decks for gear and rest of vitality? Pretty much, yeah. Unless you want to go for blocking. Unless you want to go for, for blocking. Is there any advantage to use something to increase the frame rate in D2? I heard there were tools for that. Um, you won't be able to increase your frame rate. Diablo 2 is locked at 25 FPS because the game is built on 25 FPS. Uh, we can go into a little Q&A here. So, so let's, if you have any questions on history of D2 speedrunning or anything we've kind of talked here, let's go through some, some question time because um, we've got some in the chat there already. So I, I'll just go ahead and answer some more. Because I think I've gone through the history of it enough here. Um, you know, so now we can we can do some Q&A on it. But, but yeah, so frame rates are locked at 25 FPS. Even if the game says you're getting more, you're not. Because things like your cast rate, your attack speed, your all of that stuff is built on your on the game being 25 fps how do i keep my sin skin so smooth um i shave sometimes will we have any time a hell hardcore hell barb run yeah possibly you're such inspiration i want to get myself somewhere on the leaderboard get it ubio do i see nightmare percent runs being a thing i could see somebody pushing it i could see somebody pushing for them um I just don't like them. I understand them, but I just don't like them because Nightmare is easy. Like, through to the end of Nightmare is just easy. I guess that's the problem. So it's like, if you're going to do that, just do a normal run. If you want to be challenging, go through Hell. But going through Nightmare, it just... I don't know. It just seems... It, it's, a, it's a good middle ground run, but honestly, it feels like if you're going to go that far, go to Hell. Uh, I still miss... Trading, sitting at a trade channel all day, reading through the wall of trades and, and finding dual games, all those things. Yep. Yep. What is the tool that helps show your resist armor while streaming? I have a I have a tool that reads my Diablo 2 memory and displays it, like all the base stats, and then I have a tool that reads that and puts it on my overlay as well. Does the quest resist bug still exist? Yes. If you die, you lose your on your resistances until you rejoin the game. Will you add that swap casting video to, to your tutorial playlist? Oh, yes, that's actually a good idea. I will add that. Where can I find resources on Druid speedrunning? Um, Teo has a site. PF dash. I never remember the. Teo, what's your what's your speedrunning site? It's got some base stuff. Uh. Why do I hate the Necro? Because he doesn't do enough damage. He has no good damage. He's too utility and he's not solo enough. And, and I like playing solo. What rune should I consider for a, a long-term summon hell Necro? Um, stealth, Lore, Ancient's Pledge, or Rhyme, and White Wand. Those are like your great ones to start out with, get you through for a while. Then you can look at upgrading and adding in some ones that add more skills and stuff for more summoning. Um, any way to make the game four by three? Play dash window, dash W. Put that in your properties. Do I study and practice Slimo's runs? I do study them somewhat. I haven't practiced them enough. And I haven't studied them enough either. Um, any plans to do a Phantom Strike Assassin Hell speedrun? No. Uh, thanks, Langer. What's the most likely character to make it through a hell hardcore run without dying? Barbarian. Barbarian just has so much life and has such great crowd control. You can go as slow as balls, but you can get through it. Um, how would Nightmare Percent runs work? Kill Nightmare Bale. 
That's it. Is Barb safer character speed only take Warcry? Yeah. It's just the crowd control is so good on it. The only issue you have to worry about is the, if they're ranged and they're too far away. But when you have battle orders and you just have so much life as well, every point in vitality on a Barbarian is worth 4 HP. No other character gets that much life for it. A Druid gets 2 HP, right? The life per... A lot of people don't know that. Your life and mana per vitality and energy point is different per character. So let's show that over, over really quickly over here. Barbarian gets four life. Amazon Assassin and Paladin get three life. And Druid, Necro, and Source get two life per vitality point. This is also why I hate the Necromancer, because he's weak, doesn't do damage, and gains no life either. And that's what makes a Druid run actually really hard. Druid should be up here, in my opinion. I think Sorcerer should be the only one at plus two. Um, Assassin gets a little more stamina, who cares? And then... Uh, do they have the... No, it's just Vitality. Let's go to Energy. And then an Energy, here's how much mana gain you get per point in Energy. So this is why, like, it's, you know, sometimes nice to put in a little Energy. But, like, on a Barbarian, you never point points into Energy. Even though you want more mana... You, you get the mana through a wand that gives plus 100 mana or whatever because it's such a waste of a point. I can either get plus one ener mana or plus four life. I'm always going to take the life, right? Can I post a link to the speedrun source? Sure. How, uh, favorite class to speedrun? Hard to say. I like Assassin Trapson through Hell, not through Normal. I like Sorceress through Normal. I like Javazon or Amazon through Hell. Paladin's medium for me. Just kind of varies. I like Sorceress a lot, though. Um, how have the different strats evolved for speedrunning for your class of choice? Different use of skills and different places to level up. Uh, we kind of talked through that already. A lot of it was Sorceress. And, we, and I mean, my, my character of choice is really every character, but except Necro. But uh, we talked through that a little bit earlier. Lawbringer Iron Golem? It's very solid. Lawbringer is a great item. That's one of the best overlooked uniques. I, I, think, I don't think it's as, or not uniques, um, I don't think it's as overlooked though now. I think people have started using it a lot more. Question about tutorials I watched long ago. When teleporting, you always have your character screen open. It's because it moves my character and gives me a longer teleport range. Okay, so let's go to, my YouTube is really, really quick. Best character to start speedrunning with, um, the druid. I like the druid because it's so simple. You don't worry about anything. You don't even assassin. You have to worry about putting your burst of speed on and stuff. You don't worry about any of that stuff, and uh, with the with the druid, right? Like you just get one skill tree. Go through normal. It's really easy. All right. Um, I'm going to open up this video for this, and then I'll show that in a second. The cute girl um, from uh, high school that all right. we can go on uh, cool. a date. So here, here is what I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you um, what I mean by character moves. So look at where my character screen is. I mean, I didn't, you know, she was the one who said that. I was like, please. As soon as I'm done talking. Um... I start teleporting. Anyway, in the past. Okay. You know, so look at where my character sure is right now. Center of the screen. Okay. Now watch this. My character is no longer in the center of the screen. My character is now on the right of the screen, which means my cursor can go further to the left now than if my character is in the center of the screen. If I had this same distance between character and cursor when she was right here, my mouse would be off the screen. I could only teleport this distance so i gain a whole extra this amount per teleport by opening the screen okay next question when when do you drop stealth and leaf as a source into other gear um leaf for what druid when you switch out of fire damage or if you're getting hit too badly and it just hurts too much stealth Maybe for like treachery or, you know, there's like very few instances I want to drop stealth in a speedrun. Uh, I have a piece of dead skin on my front lip. I know. 
It's annoying me. There we go. No, it's still there. I got half of it. Is it gone yet? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was annoying. Um, what about a practical type of run? Run to Socket Quest or to Hell Forge? It just seems too narrow. I, I mean, there's just there's there's already so many runs. I just don't like the idea of adding in all these. I mean, they're fun, silly runs, but I don't think any of them should be serious. Who is the first D2 speedrunner? I think Nightfall was. Uh, I never saw somebody before Nightfall. There might have been someone before that, but I mean, there probably was actually. Um, was Pascal? No, Pascal. <laughs> what's his name? Not Pascal. Uh, oh, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Indrik. Indrik might have been before Nightfall. What's it? The Necro hating. Sorry. Um, Druid is plus two because he gets life from Wolf and Oak Sage. Otherwise, he would be 10k HP. Yeah, but nobody uses Oak Sage. It's annoying. What's the good starting ground? I mean, everybody uses Oak Sage, but in speed runs, he dies in a second. Good starting ground to farm on an ice source, not geared to hope for goodies. Go to Nightmare Mephisto or Hell and Dariel and Hell Mephisto. Whichever one you can kill in time. Mephistos give the best, like, they have such good drop tables. It's amazing. Um, it's so true, all the good names. If someone's a single player through to Hell, what's your advice on best class? And or do you keep stealth the whole way? Uh, is single player through to hell my advice on the best class? That's hard to say. That's, it's really hard to say. Sorceress is great because she has such good damage output, but you're going to have a lot of trouble in hell with a sorceress. I mean, she's weak. She's a glass cannon. Um, keeping stealth the whole way is great for the faster cast rate, faster run, faster hit recovery. Honestly, unless you replace it with like a smoke or something to get your res up tons. I don't know if you do much else with it. Um... Best Fishymancer or classic Magic Damage Necromancer? Uh, magic Damage Necromancer is better. Fishymancer is probably safer. Uh, they're both pretty safe. Necro can be very safe. You just bone prison literally everything. Um, yeah, I know. It's really unfortunate. Long name. Old school Blood Golem Iron Maiden. Old school Necro. Ugh. Do you need a lot of itemization knowledge to speedrun Diablo 2? Yeah. Yeah, you do. I mean, you have to be quick with items, right? Once again, I'll bring up a, a video on this. How would Spearing change if there are no mana potions sold from vendors? Oh my god, it would be horrible. Warmth would become a thing, which is awful already in itself. Um, god. I, I don't even... I mean, I know it used to be like that. And that was... It's terrible. <laughs> Just terrible. Thoughts on resistances versus all of the breakpoints. Uh, certain breakpoints are really important. 37 faster cast rate, for example, I think is a very important breakpoint to have. Um, IAS, less so. FHR, less so, but still good to have. Uh, it really just depends. It, I mean, it's one of those judgment calls. These are the things that have to be judgment calls that you just have to make. Just, you know, that's it. You just have to be able to sit there and go, this is what I need right now. Um, which barb build is better? Sing barb. Any percent? What would 100% for Diablo 2? All quests. Why is Pacifist listed on the speedrun website but not Tiny Hands? I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Tiny Hands should definitely be there. 100% normal. 100% could be an interesting category to add. But it just gets a little tedious. But it could work. <laughs> Can someone drag me? Get oh, okay. Have I ever bought it for items? Like, I did for a week probably 10 years ago. 
I literally like I just wanted to see kind of what it was like started botting bought it for a week and then quit playing Diablo 2 for three years or two years like I was like the at the end of playing Diablo 2 and I was like well maybe this will make it fun and it didn't <laughs> um, and I haven't like done any hacks or anything ever since then banned uh, could I explain more on what the breakpoints mean exactly for faster cast rate and take increased attack speed? Sure, it means the frame. So like I said, Diablo is at 25 FPS. That means 25 frames happen per second, right? I mean, hopefully people understand that. So the amount of actions that you can do are based on how, f like your breakpoints. So, for instance, I don't remember exactly, like, what they are in terms of frames, but, like, let's say that 105 faster cast rate on a sorceress means every seven frames you can teleport or you can cast something. As opposed to every eight frames if you're at 63, or nine frames if you're at 37, or 10 frames, right? Every time that you go up a breakpoint, you cut a frame off that it takes for you to cast something. And so now, all of a sudden you're casting things a lot faster. And it's actually a huge difference. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a huge difference when you can start getting from like 10, 9, 8, set, right? The faster you can get down there, the more stuff you can cast, the faster you can go, the less chance you have of things hitting you, and the less time, because there's all of the like time for animation, all that stuff, and all that time is wasted time that can just, you can get hit, and all these bad things can happen. So the faster you are through those things, the, the better you off you are. What speed, speedrun do you feel you got in, me interested in speedrun Diablo 2? Uh, Sorceress. Can you give me a direction? Uh, no, Dad's Mocha. Mwah, gives this to you. Direction on, on get help with D2 pluggy working. Uh, my my video is the best help I got. If not, you can ask around. Warren's can maybe help you. He's helped other people. How much faster cash rate hit recovery stream for in hell? Uh, at least 63 for the faster cast rate. Faster hit recovery. I never know a speed running because you just kind of deal with whatever the heck you get. So I don't have a good one for that. Um, reported rip. Best combo at hell leap barb with sources or any DPS or conviction paladin Javazon. Hell leap barb with sources or any DPS or convicted paladin in Javasan. Leap barb is the most amazing thing in the world. Because when you max leap, 20 and leap, when you leap in the same spot on top of yourself, every single monster gets knocked back on the entire screen. That's how big the, the, the area of effect is for a max leap. So all you have to go is go hoot, 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 and just jump up and down in the same place. Nothing can touch you on an entire screen's worth. Um, so I love like a Javazon with conviction. I think that murders everything, uh, but it's amazing for any, any character. So I like I like the Java conviction in that instance. Um, did I use hack ring items like Aussie rings and stuff? Yeah, when when they came out on Battle.net, you can bet your butt I had Oculus rings on my characters. I had all those items. Um, are there any items that cannot drop in pits? No, but only from the bosses, the champions, and the unique bosses and the unique boss minions. The regular white monsters in there, they they can't drop some items. What big eyes you have, thank you. I hate you. All this talk has me installing Battle.net. Sorry. Every next breakpoint is bigger than the previous. Truth. Uh, let's see. Do I like waffles or pancakes better? It's so hard to decide. It depends my mood. Probably waffles, but I like pancakes too. Um... What happened in DBZ stream? I postponed it to tomorrow because I still have to do a little work on it. Correct. Having a score which doesn't change the breakpoint doesn't do anything. Having, if I have uh, like Sorceress, 37 faster cast rate is a breakpoint. The next one's 63. If I have 40 faster cast rate or 60 faster cast rate, I teleport and cast and do everything at the exact same speeds. They do not change at all. There is zero difference from 40 to 60. It's all about the breakpoints. That is it. Things like faster run walk, though, 
are progressively increasing. They're diminishing returns, but you will be faster every point of faster run walk you have. That is not a breakpoint thing. Um, did you ever consider that normal run just goes straight to straight instead of countess runs? You need the runes. Stealth is way too important. We've all, we've real we've tested it before. It's pointless. Nothing is better than stealth. Moving there. Kisses really to you. insightful stream, llama. Poison Thanks. dagger necro. No. What do you think is the next most likely world record category to be broken? Depends what we run. What it, wherever we focus, I think we can break. Except for like, pal, uh, sorceress and stuff will be really hard. Have you ever considered duo health speed run for fun? Uh, it's just not as fun. Um, honestly, playing online has so many awful things about it that we just we just kind of don't like it that much. None of the speedrunners really enjoy it. We've done it sometime. It's just okay. Um, why don't you ever try to make a spirit in your speedrun? Spirit is not a single player rune word. Ladder, ladder only. How long, how can you, how long can you soul farm the Immortal King set with classic luck? Well, it's not in classic, right? Isn't it only a whatever item? So, um, source breakpoint for faster cast rate at 86. Well, you're still on the 63 then. The next faster cast rate breakpoint's not till 105. I don't understand that. Is the DBZ stream going to be a bunch of DBZ games? No, I'm going to be playing. D I'm going to be playing Diablo 2. I'll just be um, dressed up, doing funny, silly DBZ stuff. Co-op students would be amazing to watch. It depends. I think things like a Paladin Amazon Gee, could be really fun. Yo, Hurricane, what up? Thank you so much. But anything with the sorcerers is boring because then it's just one person waiting while the sorcerers teleports ahead. Um, is there a breakpoint for faster recovery? How much you'd recommend? I don't. I don't know enough about faster recovery breakpoints. Uh, for because once again, it just comes down to whatever you can get. Honestly, there's not really a like specific breakpoint that's like this is a one, right? Like in faster caster, we kind of like these are ones you need. Faster recovery, we don't have those really. Have I ever accidentally broken a speed record? No, I don't think so. Farming Countess Online is horrible. Best time I've ever found during a speed run? Probably, I mean, probably my like 119 Sorceress. I feel like that was a pretty good time. Running sub 120 on Sorceress was a pretty big deal. Still is, even though Slimo has a 112, I still think it's a pretty big deal. When will the Chainmail return? We'll bring it back at some point. Is the 200 breakpoint worth trying to achieve? No. Unless you're farming, like, with perfect gear or for lower cost or something. If you could have one Diablo skill in real life, what would it be? No teleport. Um, find items so I could go loot corpses. Uh, are you shaving for DBZ? Yes. Talk show? Talk show. Uh, you say solo Necromancer sucks. And make a co-op speedrun with the Necromancer. Still sucks. <laughs> Even in co-op runs, the Necro is not that great. There's always better characters. Dual run means double to uh, runes and split drops. Yeah, also trying to do countess on duo sucks. Duo source telling around. Would there be a way to make that fun? Eh, maybe. How do you accidentally break a world record? Slimo did it once with the sorceress, right? He was going for hell source. And he... Hey, Arakan, I'm good. How are you? And he broke the normal. No, it's Paladin. I think it was Paladin. Something like that. One of those runs. Maybe it was Sorceress. Um, ever obscure runs like Enchantress Throw Barb, like your bro would in? Yeah, I do obscure ones every now and then. Uh, this band season is very quiet on MD2GA. Would you consider to play a POD reset in a month? Mm, probably not. I don't do play a uh, third party server. Blizzard has in their TOS that they're against it. Um, best time you found during speed run? Like I said, the 119 on my source. Am I still trying for sorceress record? Yeah, I'll be trying for things. 
What about PvP speedrun? Players go hostile at level 9 and mess with each other to take the lead. I've thought about that, actually. The difficulty uh, is... Fresh meat. Okay, says, thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate that. The difficulty with that is what happens when you get to Andariel. Only one person can kill Andariel, so it ends at Act 1, right? Um... So basically everybody just gets down to Indaril and then, because we've done it before, everybody gets to Indaril and one person gets the kill off and then that's it. GG, best gear, max plus skills, summon Necro versus Source one-on-one, who wins? I mean, you know, you get a summon Necro though. I mean, if he teleports on top of her, he can kill her, but she's blasting blizzards and stuff down. Could be a fair fight. Best PvP character in my opinion. I love a Nova Sorceress with with 200 faster cast rate, and then a Mercenary with Conviction. Um, top three classes in the game: Paladin, uh, Sorceress. I think those are kind of your tier one classes. Hard hard to put another one. It really depends. There's so many different. Do you mean dueling? Do you mean getting through the game, rushing, you know, whatever. It's hard to really say, but those two, I, I think, are the best. Um, yeah, but it's still third-party server, things like that. In your opinion, which runner is the most useless? Uh, Neftir. <laughs> trash. Absolute trash runner. What's the latest trick info you learned about D2? Um, it could be this potential crushing blow war cry from swap casting stuff. We'll have to see how it goes. Best PVM character for MF without teleport. Find item barbarian. Actually pretty good if you have decent gear. Because you get to double loot. You get 50 to 60% extra items, basically. Um, also, like a zealer... Or a... Yeah, Zelo can be okay for, like, pit runs, things like that. There's a few different things. What do you think about speedrunning D2 mods like Media XL? I tried it for a bit. Um, I think the problem with a lot of mods is they're too broken in, in certain ways. I don't know. They're okay games, but you can definitely see that they're not fully fleshed out. Like, you know, the speeds of some monsters and things like that. Just get, It just gets a little silly. It doesn't feel... It takes me out of the element, I guess, when I play a lot of mods. Because there's always just something that's just not right feeling about it. Um, what, do you th what about a speedrun using only level 1 skills? Max charge bolt and good luck? Could be okay. We've done Charge Bolt for a while. It just eventually gets boring. Um, best PV PVM, no tell, you'd say Necro, Amazon Assassin. Uh, you gotta have a Barbarian in there, man. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, Amazon's really good for that. Um, Neftier Click of Shadows to stop souls from attacking. That is true. But that's like, maybe it's one use case. And nobody in the history of ever has done that. I'd rather just have an ort ort in my helm and then not worry about the souls. Um, could I pull off a zero skills run? Probably with a barbarian. It would just be boring. Whatever character did, it would be boring. Some things are better not done. How many people are actually competitive in Diablo 2 speedrunning? Mm, me, Teo, Slimo, Flufflo, P Funk's getting there. Um, Blazer does okay every now and then, but he's still stuck on that pacifist paladin. Uh, Ryu used to be, but he's not playing anymore, really. Um, yeah. There's probably a couple others that are. You know, getting there. Like I say, you've got kind of tiers in your speedrunning. Emotionally compromised can run okay. Night falls a little bit behind, but he's still a decent runner. You know, it, it, it kind of varies because people are doing different runs and things. Worth getting energy on a sing barb if you have no plus mana? No. Take the life and just get plus mana elsewhere. BDD. BDD's not bad. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there's there's definitely, like, you've got some tiers in your speedrunning. 
and some people are better at running different things than others. Some people like Slimo focuses exclusively just about on the sorceress. Just now as he started running other characters, um, you know, so he was amazing sorceress, but not great in other characters for a long time. And so now he's working on that stuff. My barb gets one ticket of experience per 35 minutes on level 94. That's about as fast as my source. Yep. That's about exactly the same speed as my sorceress at 97. <laughs> um, where did I grow up? Uh, Texas. And I moved to Oklahoma later. Never thought I would be in Oklahoma, honestly. Growing up, I hated Oklahoma. I guess I still kind of do, so I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Ever tried to speedrun Diablo 3? No, I played through it once. That was enough for me. Maybe I'll try it at some point. Maybe I'll try it at some point. My Oklahoma is where school was and then job was, and I just ended up staying here. Favorite act in the game? I love Act 4. One, I love that you can speedrun it really fast. Um, but I also love the theme of it. I love that the boss is different. All the other bosses are kind of similar, right? Go down a couple levels in catacombs, go down a couple levels in durance, go, you know, get to boss room, just you and bot, right? All the other ones are kind of similar, but act four, it's like, you got to go and you got to pop all the seals and kill all the bosses. Yeah. It's just cool. Right. The hell theme. I just really like it. What does Slimer do better than me on Sorceress and vice versa? He shops better than I do, though he shops slower than I do. He, if, he, if he improved his shopping speed, he would actually be even faster. So he, he shops a little slower, but he, he's better about finding the right places to shop and the right times to shop. And looks for things like plus charge bolt staffs and stuff like that. Um, he also is way better about experience, making sure he's getting experience at the right times. And I think that's his biggest improvement over me. Um, worst act overall, speed on and casual. Uh, act three really sucks because of the jungles. You n not, and we read the maps, you know, I've run act three thousands of thousands of times. Um, you still can never be a hundred percent sure if you get a skip or not. And that just sucks so much if you get, and then even then, if you, you don't have a skip, you go in a great marsh and it goes like this, you don't know which way to run. You could, if you go that way, it could be flare jungle. You go that way, it could be flare. You never know. And one of them leads to a dead end. It's so annoying. Um, casual, it's not bad because somebody will rush you through it. So act two is your worst casual one because you got to worry about all that stuff. Do I like Geed? Yeah, he's all right. All right, baby rams. Do you think there could ever be a speedrun category where we have to complete Diablo 1, 2, 3? Yeah, I do. The issue is no, none of us like running Diablo 3. We run Diablo 1, and it's fun. We like Diablo 2 and it's fun, but none of us want to run Diablo 3. Um, but eh, maybe someday we have to do it. Um, which single area is the worst? Mm. I mean... It's hard. Hell Act 3 Jungles. I still think is difficult because so it's so many so many characters can't deal with the monsters so many of them are extra fast and all this stuff and it just plus you're trying to find your way out of there it just gets really ugly i don't mind the sewers actually sewers aren't aren't bad diablo one with or without glitches uh without glitches what is d3 nobody really knows um, do you send soul and search of answers? Favorite super unique monster name? It's tough. I, I, I'll go with Beetle Burst. The alliteration is fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it can be kind of bad, Ubio, but at least you can kill a lot of them. Did I play Torchlight? I have not. If there's anything I can improve about Diablo 2 to make speedrun better faster, what would it be? Um, I would fix melee so that they can actually hit things and maybe have some sort of AoE so then melee could become viable. Favorite moment when I got screwed up by chat? 
I don't know. Chat screws me up a lot of times. Oh, that's true. Ashwound the Unclean is my favorite. But he's not a super unique. He's just a unique monster. Super unique is Nilithak, Beetlebirds, those guys. It's the monsters that always spawn. He's just a unique boss monster. Or not boss, but, you know, unique monster. Um, and that is my favorite unique monster. If you're just talking that, it's either Ashwin the Uncleaned or, oh, it's like Puke Lust. It's just a standard, you know, go-to game besides Diablo 2. Probably StarCraft. I don't know if I really have another one. How often do I play D1? Not often. It moves a little slow for me, honestly. Do I plan to try out? There are there are billions. There are billions. I, t I still don't know what that game is. I've tried to watch it a couple times, and I just get... I don't like watching it. Maybe I would like playing it. I don't know. Maybe I should try it out at some point. Favorite person in each act? Uh, Charcy... Drognan, um, Ormus, because that's the only guy I really talked to in Act 3, Tyrael, and Larzuk. There you go. Uh, favorite mod in chat, not BYD. Um, is Hannibard a mod? Let's go Hannibard. Ky Kylie's a mod too. Miss Kylie. That's my favorite mod. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's go with the... <laughs> no. I like all of my mods. My mods are all great. Um, did I hear about Teo almost killing a Lara Shade yesterday? Teo. Yeah, no, I actually saw the clip. That was really weird. I don't know what the heck happened. Ashwoon the Unclean is the tier of my dropper. Yep. All my mods do a great job, even though they don't. What do you recommend someone to start as if they are new to the game? Druid. It's like an RTS against AI zombie. Interesting. How good am I in Diablo 1 PvP? I haven't played Diablo 1 PvP, honestly. Should you run Pindle? Yeah, Pindle's easy. Pindle's a great for dropping a lot of items. Favorite person in D2? Uh, Natalia. Mmm. Uh, what is your opinion on the following possible item sets? Cannot be f cursed. Rune find percent. Do you have any stats you'd like to see in game? Cannot be cursed is dumb. Curses have to exist in the game. Rune find percent would also be silly. I don't like either one. Any stats I would like to see in the game? I'd like a health shrine to cure curses. That's not really a stat. I don't know. I feel like most of the stats are good. AoE, like I said, a cleave would be good for melee. Um, oh, hey, Kylie's here. Hi, Kylie. <laughs> would an increased rarity unique items only run work? That would be hard. That would be hard to do. <laughs> Lol, the mod train of feels bad. <laughs> well... <laughs> Bonus all 200 team BYD. That's why BYD. That's why any pass in D2 PvP. Yeah, I used to I used to run a Novasaurus a lot um, I PvP'd a little bit, but I generally I didn't PvP hard hardcore. Some people went hard on it Is that what happened Warren? Wow Are lower Lorakura super chest runs actually good or is there a better way of farming runes? No, that's your best way up to burr rune Beyond that, you'll start looking at Travancle and Kaos. Um, how would you fix melee? Like I said, get rid of, fix the attack rating, defense calculation with level and all that. Fix that so your hit chance is way higher. And um, give a cleave of some sort. Feelings on PoE? Fun, but that's another topic. That's, that's, that's another discussion to be had. <laughs> Uh, on another episode of D2 Talks. Why is that Ruth Crisper a bad person for killing <laughs> Plus 20% to Teo Shrine chance. Oh, man. If you guys have PvP questions, Warren's a good person to ask. There you go. Best budget Uber character? Smiter. Hands down. Hands down. Smiter. You can, you can budget that. Drax and whatever, and you can just go to town. 
Yeah, you can do a life tap wand if you want. Uh, life tap is really OP. You got a Mal from Stone and Hellblood more recently. What? Weird. Regarding melee, and remove block from monsters. Interesting. I haven't thought about that. Um, yeah. All right. We have fielded a lot of questions. Wow. That was just like rapid fire. Whew. I feel good on that. Uh, yeah. I think that about covers episode one. How far are we in? All right. Two, two hours, 15 minutes. Seems pretty good. I feel like that about covers episode one. How often will this talks be? I'd like to do it weekly. I would like to do it weekly. Uh, once again, I have a schedule right there. Boom, thanks. That's where it beat me to it. I have a schedule, so I will put in. You can see exactly what my uh, schedule of events coming up is going to be. I will put in when I'm doing all these D2 talk show, when I'm doing every single thing, every single day that I'm doing will be on there. Um, so that should be very easy to follow along so you can know when the next show is going to be. I don't have another one scheduled yet, but maybe let's put it for Monday. Let's see, next, uh, let's do Tuesday, actually. Monday's that hell hardcore run. Let's do Tuesday. Diablo 2 talk show episode two. All right, I've saved it down. The 16th is gonna be our next talk show episode. The 16th is gonna be our next talk show episode. So, did you miss talk show? Yeah, it'll be on the VODs. Don't worry. But, uh, am I doing a meetup at PAX South? I've never, like, scheduled a meetup. I just say, if you want to meet, like, send me a message on Discord. Easy as that. So, if you aren't in the Discord, here's the Discord. Come on by, everybody. Taking it easy before the ski trip. That's right. That's right. Maybe I'll do the, a talk show during ski trip as well. That's fair potential. Um, so, Yeah. I'll be back tomorrow for my DBZ stream. This is going to be Diablo 2. I'm just going to have like a DBZ theme on top of it all, right? A little bit of like this action going on. Um, so I'm just going to have like a whole DBZ fun thing going on with it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you'll get, you can spend your dollars there as well. Do I think I could beat all the speedrunners in a real race? I almost did yesterday. Or do you mean a real race, like physically running? Yes. I was like a decathlete in college. So running is like what I do every day. Or I did every day. So physically, I think I'm one of the more fit Diablo 2 speedrunners. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Am I streaming Pack South? I might try and have like some IRL thing or something going on, but I don't know. We'll have to see. It'll be, it depends what the hotel internet's like and stuff. And they had advice where to find an MF run counter. Somebody had one that they sent me. I don't remember where it was though. Thanks, Murda. Donation incentive for IRL race of D2 streamers. We'll ha well, we all live in different places. We have like Poland, Sweden, Germany, Canada, Oklahoma, Texas. We've got like all over the place. DJ Waters could probably, we could have a fun race. He's in decent shape. Esroy ran a half marathon. Esroy could beat me in a distance race. Sprinting would still be tough. I'm a decent sprinter. I think he would, he would get, he would edge me for sure in a, in a long race. Once you get 10K and above, I think Esroy's got me for sure. 5K, I could maybe, I don't know. He's probably fast 5K runner. I don't know what my 5K time is. Maybe like 18 something. I don't know. I haven't run a 5k in a long time. So, all over. Slimo's from Poland, right? Yeah. So, we will see. We will see. But yes, I will see you guys tomorrow for the DBZ stream. 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Thank you. Your 5k is about 18 right now? Well, then we'd be close. We would be close. Hey, Slimo! So I will see you guys then. Um, this next Diablo 2 talk show looks like will be December 16th. Maybe I'll have one at PAX South or something. I don't know. Uh, if I do, I'll put it on the calendar and I'll let you guys know. And I'll try to get some other 
people in here. I'll try and have Slimo and Teo and, you know, other runners in here as well for future discussions. But I just wanted to have like an initial welcome to the the world of of talk shows. So GG everybody. Kisses to you all. Hope you guys have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.